Hey guys, welcome back to another UDT Fundamentals tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to recreate the Dead Eye effect or uh, mechanic, sorry, from Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, to do this, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get the first person example set up in a thing. So, all you have to do is just make a new project file and then select first person example. And then uh, when you start, you'll come to your content screen. You'll see you have these two here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up my first person character here. So I'm going to go edit blueprint, open blueprint editor. And then there's a bunch of different code here that's already set up. This stuff at the top we don't need. Stick movement one we don't need. And all of this we don't need except for the input fire action. Uh, we can delete this one here. And then that should be good. Okay, so now once we have this, I'm going to come and... Let's make our, our shooting function again. So under functions, we're going to make one and we're going to call it shoot function. And then in this function, we are going to need a couple things. So we're going to need our mesh 2p. We're going to drag that out. And then we're going to go get anim instance. We're going to drag out from there and go montage play. Then connect that. We're going to select our first person fire montage and then we're going to drag out from here and go spawn actor from class. We're going to get our projectile and then set this to don't spawn if colliding. Uh, we now need to come to our shoot function and make an input. We're going to make this a transform and we're going to call this spawn transform. This will just be where the bullet spawns, so we're going to connect that one to spawn transform here. And then we're going to go place sound at location. And then our location will be get world, sorry, get actor location. And then we'll just select the default one that comes with it. So all this is, is if you're, if you're not following along using the first person one and you're using your project that you've already been making your game in, all we have here is that this is just our recall animation that came by default with the first person character template. And then this is the projectile or bullet, whichever you prefer to call it, that again came with the template. And this is just the audio sound that came with the template. So now that we've set that up, we're going to come back into our viewport. I'm going to show you one more thing. If you haven't uh, followed along this tutorial, you notice that inside of the gun they have these little collisions. And all this is, is it's just a simple little collision that's set up that sits inside of it. And then later on when we spawn in our bullet, we use that to set that it as a reference. Yeah, so now from our input fire action, we need to create a ammo variable and then make it an integer. And then I'm going to set this to 6. We also need to make another variable. We're going to call it slow-mo. Make this one a boolean. And then we'll leave that one as true for now, but we will change that later. We'll drag out from pressed and get a branch. And then in this one, we will get our ammo. Pardon me, drag out and go greater than. And then connect it, leaving it as zero. And then we'll make another branch. Drag out from it and add slow-mo. Now I will explain everything once I'm done at the end of the episode, so if you get lost on anything, don't worry, I'll ex explain how it works later on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and gonna copy this and paste it in here just to be sure that our ammo is set to zero. We're then going to get our ammo integer again. We're going to drag out and go minus minus and then decrement in. And connect that. And then we get our shoot function. And then connect that one. Now we need to give it a spawn uh, transform. So we need to give it a transform location. So we're going to go ahead and go make transform. Then we will connect that. We'll drag it down here just so we have some space. We're going to get our sphere from the collision that we set inside of here. Now for me this came by default with the template. If you haven't got that then inside of your gun you just want to set up a collision in it where the bullet was spawned. And then, oh, that's the wrong one. From this sphere, we're going to drag out and go get world location. 
Then we're going to add that into a plus factor. And then connect that to there. We're now going to get our gun offset. And then go rotate vector. Then we're going to get our first person camera. And then go get world rotation. Connect that up. Okay, so now we now need to connect our rotation to there. And that looks good. Okay, so what's happening here is we have our ammo, which by default we set to 6. And then it checks to make sure that our ammo is higher than 0, because if we don't have any ammo, we don't want to be able to shoot. And then it checks to see if we're in slow mode. We haven't set this up late, uh, yet, so for now I've just left that permanently on, so it always returns as true. And then we just check to make sure we have more than 0 ammo again. And now we want a minus one ammo every time we shoot, so this uh, note here just removes one from ammo. We then play our shoot function and then we give it a spawn location set up here. So this part here will get our rotation of our current character and then it adds the gun offset to it, which is just the height and location of the gun set up here. And then this one is just getting the location and then it adds them together and it gives it the rotation. So that this way that no matter which way our character is facing, it will always have that information so that it can spawn it at the correct position. If we didn't have this stuff here, it would just always spawn it, but it wouldn't spawn it facing the right way that our character is. So now if I come into our game here, press play, when I shoot now, it'll shoot out the bullet in the direction that I'm facing. And now that I've shot all my ammo, I can't shoot again. So if we go back into play, you'll notice now I go 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six, and now I can't shoot anymore. Probably can't tell, but I am clicking. Okay, so we're gonna set up a quick reload and slow mo functionality here. So we're gonna come in into our inputs, project settings, and then inputs, and then we're going to make one called reload. We'll bind that to our R key. Oops, that's not our R key. And then we'll make another one, we'll call this slow-mo. Then we'll bind this to our left shift key. Okay, so now I'm going to come back into our event graph. We'll set up the reload one first. Get our ammo, and then we'll set that to 6. Now if you have any kind of animation, you would put the animation settings here which uh, would be very similar to what you have in the shoot function where you just play a montage. And then you would then put a delay for however long that animation lasts for and then you would do this. But for us, we're just gonna do it like this. We're gonna call this reload. We're going to make another one and we're gonna call this one slow-mo. We're going to drag out from crest and make a branch. We will then check to see if our slow-mo is on or not. If it's not on, then we will set slow-mo, set it to true, and then we'll set global time dilation to 0.2. And what this does is it'll make it so that it, everything runs at one-fifth of the speed that it normally would. Uh, we also then need to make a post-process, which I already have, so we're going to then go ahead and make a post-process. And then we are going to come under color grading, white balance, uh, temperature, and I'm going to set this to max. Now uh, you can come up with a fancier one if you want. I'm kind of lazy, so I'm just going to up the temperature a lot, which will make it kind of look brownish. So we're going to drag our post process out, then going to go set enabled, and then tick true. And I'm going to comment this, I'm going to call this slow-mo. So now, uh, oh, it's permanently enabled. Uh, we need to come under and on our post-process and come all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to close this for now. And then when we come all the way down, you'll see auto-activate. Make sure that is false. 
Uh, and then under Enabled and Unbound here, we're going to select Enabled and turn that off and then leave Unbound on. So now when we come in, you'll see that it's not automatically on like it was before. And we can walk around, we can still shoot, only six bullets though, so... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now I can't shoot anymore without reloading, but now if I press my R key, I can shoot again, so... I'm out of ammo. And now I can also press my left shift key. Uh, we forgot something. Ah, slow-mo is still permanently set to on, so make sure we turn that off. So now when I press shift, it'll put me in slow motion. Now at the moment, we're permanently stuck in slow motion, so... We'll work on the rest of this next episode, so if you guys want to see me work on this a little more, we'll be setting up the rest of the slow motion uh, system. And then we will also be making it so that when you're in slow motion, it puts a little hit marker on whichever player you shoot, and then it saves that data to then uh, shoot them later on. Now, I know that sounds a little weird, I'm not very good at explaining it, but it will work properly and do the full Red Dead Redemption Deadeye effect. Anyway guys, that's all for this episode, see ya.